Well, hello everybody out there in YouTube land. This is old uncle. This is old Stephen Lebooth from Ghost Stories Told from the South, guys. Glad you're back for some more. I'm gonna do a video for this one. And uh, sorry about the mishap and all the problems with the uh, this weekend. I did have an episode coming up, but my I I load all my episodes on the tran on transistor. And they're the ones who put it on Spotify and Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, etc., etc. Well, they're doing some work on their uh, platform this weekend, and they tell me that they've been telling me to go ahead and get my stuff loaded up for the weekend, and I didn't get it done. But it'll be back Monday, and then everything will be back to normal. So, yeah, that's how we're going to do it there, silly sackies. Well,. Hit that subscribe button. I want to say thank you guys for listening. And <coughs> I'm going to um, be going live tonight. So Hope you hear this in time. Hope I get everything recorded and done in time. But I'm going to go live tonight so it will be a great time. <laughs> Alright, let's get the audio part going. Well, hello. And welcome back. To another scary, scary edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen LeBooth. And I got some scary, scary stuff for you today, boys and girls. <laughs> Alright, man. Got some more road stories to cover. I hope you like the, uh, the uh, last one. Sorry this episode didn't come out on Saturday like it normally does. Transistor kept telling me to uh, kept telling me to get my stuff ready because Transistor is the one I pay them and load everything onto their platform and they load it to Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, all that stuff. Well, there's going to be doing some work this weekend and said their site would be down. Excuse me. So you could you needed to get all your downloaded stuff for the weekend before Friday. At midnight, and I didn't do that, so my bad. I had to get in there. There's gonna do a start working on a Friday into Saturday and Sunday, and I gotta work Monday morning, so I'll get everything cleaned up. It'll be back on Monday evening. Third to cleaning their platform up. I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here. Uh, thank you guys for understanding. All right, man. Well, I hope you're having a great week. I want to say thank you to everyone who listens out there. Everyone around the world. Thank you very, very much. You don't know how humbling and how cool it is knowing that I'm hearing a little old country boy doing this in Texas in the middle of Texas. Not the middle. You know, I'd say uh, central. North central Texas, kind of. But anyways, I'm doing this in my little house and I just get heard from around the world. It's just... Freaking amazing to me. Freaking amazing. Well, guess it's that time, everybody. Go ahead. Get you a nice cozy blanket. Get that fire going. Get you some coffee. I got mine. Get you hot cocoa or whatever and cuddle up and hit play and get ready to be scared, ladies and gents. <sighs> Sorry, I was taking a drink. All right. All right. Our first story is Prospector's Road in Garden Valley, California. Cruising along Highway 49, if you turn left onto Marshall Road, about a half a mile late, later, you will see a small road head off and to the left. The road is called Prospector's Road, and it, it, is twi and it twists and turns about three miles through some hilly parts of the gold country. Starting, the, starting and ending at Marshall Road, which is which it lies west of, running roughly from Coloma to Garden Valley, California. And I'm sorry, 
if you hear that in the background. I don't know what it is. <sighs> Most drivers take the main road, Marshall Road. But for those daring who takes this twisty, windy Proctor's Road, they might... I had my phone plugged in charging, and every damn time I get a notice, stuff's coming up, so I'm plugged in. Okay, drivers take the windy Prospect Road. They might run across a fearsome and terrifying ghost who is perhaps the cause of many accidents and deaths along the treacherous route. In the 1800s, several gold discoverers happened in, happened in the, uh, in the 1800s, several gold discoveries happened in the hills that Prospect, Prospector Road runs through. Sadly, these also meant that several gold miners lost their lives performing the hard work and went along with mining their claims. Stories of gravens Oh, story of cave-ins, bandit attacks, suicides, and etc. Were, were not uncommon to those who worked the uh, mines in this area. One such miner was, do was done in by another... Was done in by another uh, rough means. He supposed, supposedly... Drunkenly, drunkenly bragged about his claim one night in a local saloon boasting his following miners about how much gold he had found as sadly as sadly happened way too often back in the 1800s they ambushed him one night and murdered him out uh, out of the uh, out of his jewelry or uh, out of, they robbed him and stuff out of jealousy and greed. That's why they killed him. Because they wanted his money. He was in there bragging about the uh, mine of his. Now his ghost haunts the road, appearing much, up, appearing before hikers and drivers along this windy path. He had been described as big and tall and with a broad wearing fraud, frown and torn work uh, like clothes. He looks like he would. He looks like he. He looks like he would expect a miner to look. He is usually seemingly transparent, as well as also being reported as hovering above the ground. His ghost leaves no trace of his passing, no broken twines or footprints. Mm. So this guy haunts the place because basically somebody robbed him because of his uh, gold mine he had. A lot of that went on back then, you know. There was a lot of uh, a lot of these mining towns. There wasn't uh, really much law, and back then, I mean, you were way out there in the middle of effing nowhere. His ghost whip whispers at those who encounters it, "Get off of my claim," as if he's trying to find out to fend off claim jumpers or bandits who have came for his gold. Sadly, sadly, he never got to finish mining his claim, and now is now is per, per, uh, now is portrayed to be responsible for multi accidents along the road. He is also he has also entered homes in the area, unlocking and leaving doors open and terrifying pets and spooky residents. Other costly encounters have included residents reporting objects being moved on their own, later being found in another locations where they were not left. Accidentally objects have disappeared, being impossible to locate, any appearing in their original location later. Doors have mysteriously locked, even when the keys for these locks on the door had been locked last. And despite the fact that no one has vis is, uh, despite the fact that no one was visible at the uh, time of the disturbances. So basically what they're saying is when this stuff happened, there was no one there but them. <coughs> <coughs> so 
if you ever want to go driving down a long, creaky, crazy road, go there. You'll be scared. That road does sound creepy, but yeah, there's all sorts of stories like that where someone got killed on the road or an accident or something happened tra tragically to them. And it's sad because a lot of these miners and stuff left what they was doing and came from around the world to find uh, claims and get rich quick off gold. And a lot of them didn't didn't happen for them, you know. A lot of them were, uh, a lot of them got killed like that guy or just something, you know. So, all right, what do we have next for you gurus? Okay, our next one is Route 2A in Orostoke County, Maine. Welcome to the Welcome to the Weird Wednesday where we explore okay, never mind, I ain't reading that. Where would I need to read? Okay. Today's location takes us to the Land of lighthouses and lobsters and to the state of Maine. If the frigid waters and dangerous weather conditions and upwards of 11 haunted locations aren't enough to frighten and terrify you into, a, into staying away from this place, then maybe a drive up to the haunted, uh, haunted Hinesville woods will do the trick. Will do the, blah, 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 will do the trick. Many locations can att uh, attest that once you hit a certain point, a spot in Maine, there's not much by way to way of population. Enter Arl Stoke County, where Route 2A res resides. Route 2A is one of the most haunted areas in the Pine Tree State. In fact, the site is famous with its highway haunts and former truckers turned singer songwriters dick dick curless wrote a song called a tombstone every mile inspired by the uh, lonely stretch of road the route itself is a the route itself is composed of Parlerious S-shaped curves and 90 degree turns buried deep into the woods. And once winter hits, surprisingly, uh, a lot of uh, traffic at, uh, makes driving conditions bad there and they have a lot more uh, dri uh, driving accidents there. <clears throat> One of the truckers has, has lost, many truckers have lost their lives following the road by but they're not the only ones. Where or who else haunts the stretch of asphalt? There are reports of a disgruntled woman appearing in front of your car or running fre uh, freak, freak, uh, frantically along the side of the uh, car on the road to vanish into thin air when travelers get closer. So they'll see this chick and drive up to her and blam she disappears little girls are common hitchhikers and disappear just as frequently as pop up the flesher witch an old woman with a melted face will steal your face induce insanity and cause you to meet an untimely end if you wish to, uh, okay. Well, if you wish to go down this road, go to Maine and find it. Let's see what this part, this one says about the Route 2A. Route 2A in Aerostock County is known as a very dangerous uh, route. Uh, Dick Curlis even wrote a song about the road called Tombstones Every Mile. It's been said that many truckers have lost their lives here in hauling potatoes to Boston. After hitting a dangerous hairpin turn, however, truckers weren't the only ones to die on the arse, uh, to die on the road. What makes this area most haunted 
in the uh, country is the people have seen a woman screaming at their at that a woman screaming that her husband is trapped in their vehicle and being and uh, begging for travelers to stop but when the travelers stop and try to get closer to her she vanishes away other travelers said that they have seen a little girl on the road on the side of the road that is said to have been killed by a semi-truck many years ago <coughs> so if you ever want to go down a spooky road in maine uh i think you got you a place to go man. that place seems pretty creepy Sorry if you hear my daughter in the background. I don't have my door shut because it's just me and her. Usually she isn't so rambunctious, but she uh, is today. What the heck? Oh, okay. All right. Now we're going to do Anna's, Anna's Road. And... Tutawawa, New Jersey. If I'm butchering that name, I'm very, very sorry. Okay, Anna's Road. Perhaps is 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 uh, so scary that her. Well, we'll never, we'll never, here we go. Anna's Road perhaps is a or amp as it amps up that are fast moving highly uh, mobile state many of our most notable ghosts are seen hanging out on the side of the road where it is said that they that they met their untimely end these roadside apparitions have been witnessed by countless motorists over the course of several generations unlike the popular urban legend in the vanishing hitchhiker though who gets picked up and only uh, to disappear from the car's back seat. New Jersey street corners, corner sp uh, spooks don't seem to have any interest in bumming a ride. They seem to be just to be, they seem to just be contacted to wander their own stretch of the highway year in and year out eternally living the living the final living moments in their lives imagine if you will you are driving down a narrow winding ribbon of two lane blacktop it is sometime around midnight and the dark pavement is wet and shiny from a recent mid-autumn shower multicolored oak and maple leaves dances in front of your headlights momentarily before settling into the slick asphalt roadway to your left a distant woods uh, wooded hillside crowds its way right up to the edge of the shoulders of the street on your right a low steel guardrail is the only thing between your car and the icky black waters of the if I butcher this river up, I'm sorry. The Pasaski, Pasask, Pasaskic River. Your headlights illumining the canopy. The can your headlights illuminating the canopy of swaying tree branches over the overhead. They bow down, bow down from either side of the roadway, giving impressions that you are traveling inside of a long undulated tunnel as you see spartan or if you, uh, as you spurpit your way uh, along beneath a clear moonlit sky suddenly you find yourself drawn into a hard curve in the road and realize that you have not been paying attention to the speed at which you have been tri uh, driving as you begin to regain control of your uh, control of your car, you see something that sends a shiver 
up the length of your spine. It's a splash of red. It's a splash of red there on the road and on the guardrail, which trails off down the edge of the street. Was that that was that blood? You ask yourself as you quickly crank as you quickly uh, crane your neck to peer in the rearview mirror. As you as you set your sights back on the road before before you once more you notice an air, eerie mist forming on the glass glassy glossy moonlit river just ahead of you off the uh, off to the right or your left the forest has given way to the gently sloping hills and gleaming marble stones of a vast sparling cemetery all of a sudden the mist begins to take shape in your headlights as you flick on your high beams you can clearly make out a distant figure crossing the road up ahead of you you hit the brakes do your best to negotiate the slippery uh, pavement then you watch in disbelief as the transluc translucent mist glowing before you assumes the unmistakable form of a young woman wearing a flowing white dress she floats across the roadway inches above the ground then disappears into the moonlight graveyard you have just experienced a close encounter with the tatawa's legendary ghost of Anne. for more generations than any than anyone can seem to remember Tawas River Drive has been more commonly known to locals as Anna's Road and for just and for just as long it has played host to <coughs> in in innumerable carloads of late night thrill seekers what these adventurer night riders are looking for is the these the spiritual figure of Anna herself in an otherworldly apparition that has long been associated with its snacking with its snaking riverside byway running along the Tonawa River side of the running along the Tatawa side of the Pasiska River Riverview Drive or River Road as it's been dubbed by many a party team many deemed by partying teens by yeah partying teens seems to just be brimming with the stuff which local legends are made of and at night at night it is a dark and treacherous drive that leaves little room for the eerie between the steep hillside and on one side and the muddy uh, slough of the river on the other in its remote and wooded road right in the heart of a densely, popul densely populated area there are more mythical places to be discovered here as well or so many have alleged the isolated community located on the Norwood Taurus Terrace, I mean, on Oxboy Street, found one on one of Riverview's many curves, has long had the reputation of being New Jersey's much fabled midgetville. Hmm, that's pretty rude, but hey. But what really beckons people to Anna's Road year after year, decade after decade, is the uh, chance to see Anna herself. The allure of experiencing the supernatural firsthand has been the catalyst for count countless late night adventurers over the generations and several notorious misadventurers as well. In most cases, these ghost hunters and seekers of Midgetville are nothing more than carloads of bored 
uh, suburban youth looking for some harmless late night thrills. Anna's Road has, however, has one more occasion led to its uh, night riders down a path to down down a path to danger and even death. Riverview Riverview Drive is no longer is is no stranger to serve auto accident. It, it's no stranger it's no stranger to severe auto accidents. And Anna's Road is not that soul how has and Anna is not that soul who has been lost there. Jeez. Sounds like a creepy road. Ah, I hate that. Okay, now let's see. Okay. Anna's death and gravesite. As I have been a resident, this isn't me talking because it's clearly I'm not a resident of this place. As I have been a resident of Tatawa all my life, I can tell you that <coughs> I can tell you the actual story of this poor girl's fate. Anna was walking home from her prom at school in Little Falls. The shortest and perhaps the easiest route to take was Riverview Drive. She was passing the Laurel Grove Cemetery when a large truck plowed over her and dragged her about 50 feet or so. God dang! That's freaking crazy! Her blood can still be seen on the, can still be seen on the side of the road she has been where she has been dragged if she is to be if she is to be seen it is a short ways down the road from the blood this is very close to the place where her tomb uh, her tomb once is that didn't make any sense my brother has been to the plot in the uh, laurel grove cemetery that was created for her Though I was little, I do not remember hearing that for no apparent uh, reason at all. The tomb caved inwards and looked somewhat like a uh, cave. Blood on, Annie, on Annie's Lane. I have heard many stories about the road that have been and have been there numerous times i was totally i was told roughly the same story that she was killed on her wedding night and was killed on the road and dragged along it the first time i went through there with my friend my friends told me that there was a blood stain on the road and a splatter on the guard rail guard rail it was there whatever it was and it scared the shit out of me. I haven't even taken other friends there through the years and have told them the same story. Anna's Lane, as I have often heard, is called a great place to bring people for a scary experience. <coughs> Let me get a drink. This one's pretty long. Okay, this is, I guess, another story from somebody, so let's hear it. Same road, same road, though. <coughs> I'm writing to tell you about that, to tell you that me and some friends have seen Anna's ghost on the side of the road, near the, near the, route, near the route 80 overpass. I'm from West... Peterson so I know most of the legends about the road the most popular story about Anna is that she was excuse me decapitated after being in her car wreck with her prom date myself and the people I know who have seen her ghost usually were not looking for her for her when she appeared when you see her 
she appears to be rather short be a rather short girl who is dressed all in white who usually wisp away shortly after appearing another strange thing that happens on the road is by the cemetery where you can all where you can often see a flickering light moving around about the graves supposedly these also this is also linked to Anna's ghost this is thought that if you drive down the road at exactly 12 a.m. playing oldies music and driving the car driving your car's lights out in the middle of the two lanes when you can see her in the uh, review mirror that's creepy seeing her in the review mirror Eek. these were these were tried once a while ago we didn't see any ghosts but trust me it's really scary okay now painting Anna's Road the legend of Anna's Road as I know it is about a girl who was stumped up at her prom and decided to get drunk and walk along the road she was then moved down the down down by a car full of high school drunks after the prom supposedly she haunts the road at 2 a.m if you drive in the road with your headlights off the road is very eerie in the graveyard globes alongside the road is a guardrail painted red where she died on the eve of her death every year her endangered father returns to repair it and meet with his daughter once more Anna is supposed to be buried in the graveyard and her spirit guards all other people walking along the road at the at times she will appear to speeders to warn them of what will happen <sighs> well that one was pretty good I might say but there's always some click about why a person haunts and that one man sounds just like that on the road in Chicago where that girl is coming back from the prom or a dance and you pick her up and when you get her past the cemetery I think that's when her spirit disappears pretty creepy I'll crap my pants when I see that yes yes I would all right guys we're gonna take a little commercial break and be right back Ta -da. Oh, hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. I am just doodling right along, Jimmy Doodle. And there we go with the commercial. Let me close this out and close that out. I uh, go to uh, loops. All right, we're ready for this shit. Oh God! Wait a minute, son of a bitch! You fucking idiot, moron, motherfucker! <sighs> Sorry, guys, but I stuck the fucking wrong commercial up here. Yeah, am I a dodo bird? Damn it! Okay, now I've got the right commercial. Jesus. All right, let me fix this. All right, now. All right, let me get another drink, baby. All right. 
Let's go. All right, guys. Our next story is about Route 44 in Reno, both Massachusetts. A lot of places in Massachusetts. A lot of places. People from New England, people from New England, survive on a history of oral tradition traditions passed down by world, word of mouth and accidents that sound funny to the rest of the country. Whether it is the sports they play, or Whether it's the sports they play or their lives they live, the people are are naturally naturally are natural storytellers. Many many things that happen within the triangle begin with the subject of local lore. Well, there's a supposedly little triangle in this uh, place. That's why I just picked it because it talks about the road <coughs> too. And I figured if you want to go on a road trip, you can go check it out. Many, many things that happen within the triangle begin the uh, subject of local lure, lure. And in, in turn, much of the myth of the area seeps into the people's co collectives, collective thoughts, turning, ex, ex, uh, turning uh, just stories into uh, ghost stories. The truth might be somewhere in the middle, and at the end, uh, and at that crossroads lives the uh, red-headed uh, red-headed hitchhiker of Route 44. For as long as people in the area can remember, there have been claims of a red-headed man walking down U.S. Route 44 in Rahaboth, Massachusetts. Now that one's weird. You don't really hear about of a man hitchhiker a lot, and in, and some have stopped to pick him up, only to have him disappear on them. It sounds like an like an excellent story, giving people chills around a campfire, but the story might be more truth than legend, and the ghost might be more supernatural than lit literal literally. The description of the ghost is always the first thing that draws people into the story. A driver is going along Route 44 at night, usually near Sikonoko Road, usually around Rio Reno Booth, around the Reno Booth line. They encounter a well-built man between the ages of 45 and 55. He has red hair and is usually a beard and is dressed in a red flannel shirt and a red flannel shirt with either jeans or brown work pants and work boots. Sometimes he is well kept, but other times he appears dishuffled with an overgrown beard dirty pants and untucked shirts most times he appears so, uh, solid to the drivers but not quite all there there are some stories where he is transparent throughout the entire encounter the biggest discrepancy in this physical description of the hitchhiker is with his eyes some say they look normal but just don't feel right. Some say they are black and empty. Others, others glowingly and lifeless. Every color has been attributed to them at one time or another. From yellow and red to green. And it is this inconsistency that adds the fuel to these uh, specula the specters. Uh, you know, saying that it, he's not real. While the man looks, while the man's look might draw people in, it is the stories of his of his 
exploits that keep people coming back. There is something about them that rings familiar, familiar, but like many things in this triangle, there are twists. There are many variations of the story, making making him either a complex spirit or a subject of the town's uh, the, of the town's imitation. Someone is driving along the road, usually alone, when they see this man on this side of the road. They stop to pick him up, and at the uh, to pick him up, and the hitchhiker gets into the passengers uh, gets into the passenger side or in the back seat. He remains silent, ignoring questions, and often staring at the good Samaritan. He eventually vanishes before their eyes and no longer is there when they turn to look. This is usually followed by some type of audio finally where we where he laughs at them, at him. <laughs> Excuse me, at them. Yells or taunts them. So this guy likes to freaking yell at people. <coughs> There are other tales attached to the mystery man. Much like some of these stories, much like some of the stories from Freetown, there are also tales of people who drive through the through him only to find no evidence. Now that'd be some creepy shit too. Of an impact when they have stopped. Others have seen him on the side of the road, vanishing into the woods, waving and uh, oh yeah, waving and disappearing. Still, others have been scared to see him outside their car window while they were traveling at a high speed, or have had him suddenly be in their back seat. Now, that'd be some creepy shit. You're driving, and all of a sudden, bam! Somebody's running by your car in the back seat. Um. Anyone who has driven that stretch of road at night can understand. Can. Where was I at the back? God damn it. Sorry about that. I just get frustrated. Anyone who's driving down that stretch of road at night can understand that uneasy feeling that, per, that, that pervades you when you drive down Route 44. A similar scene plays itself. On in any rural towns across America where there are more legends than streetlights. It is a uh, classic move set up which may have something to do with the appearance of the spirit. The earliest written uh, record of the uh, occurrence was uh, set down by Charles Durkinson Robinson in his book 1994 New England Ghost, Ghost Files. In it, he describes several encounters in detail. In one, the hitchhiker, hitchhiker, ugh, hitchhiker is seen outside the window of a fast moving car. Another person picked him up only to have, them, uh, to have him vanish from the car. The most dangerous and disturbing story in this book tells of a couple who broke down at about 10 p.m. at night. The woman stayed in the car while the man went to get help. They both uh, suffered separate experiences. The man, saw, the man saw him on the side of the road and tried to talk to him. The red-headed man began yelling at him and then disappeared. Laughing from all directions at the man made made his way back to the car. The woman the woman heard his voices come over the radio, laughing 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 and taunting her until she ran out from the car. People in the town have have people in the town have mixed feelings about the resident ghost in their town. In a town known for its many hauntings, the hitchhiker is the most asked about. Law enforcement hates the attention and the investigators he brings to the town, but some residents embrace it. 
asking local merchants will get your will get you another story usually beginning with the preference that it did not happen to him and it was a few years back not all these stories are told in the past tense one woman claims that she saw him walking into the woods on another road she describes him differently and claims he never had red hair but rather died another ro died on another road with the color red on it most likely redway plain near wellmorth bridge bridge road she says a local farmer died on the road after being hit by a car changing a tile tire for a uh, stranded motorist none of none of this has been able to be confirmed chris has uh, chris has an uncomfortable relationship with the ghost that's weird how do you have a relationship with the ghost uh, he first read robin's uh, books when he was younger and became so interested he connected the he can uh, he contacted the writer to talk about the story he eventually lost the book and recently bought it again when he when the price had came down on a website he uh, where was that? He knew he knew some of the history of the road, and it has been two people that have died different parts of it over the years. Wow, that's pretty cool. And that's kind of pretty much it. <laughs> so, if you're ever around that road and you see a red-headed stranger, don't pick him up, guys. Remember, man, it is a little hot in here. Well, I had to turn off my air conditioner. I got my fan on, but I turned off the air conditioner because... I'm sitting here right by it, and you can hear it when I record, so. Yeah. I don't like a bunch of white noise when I'm recording. I try to keep it good for you peeps. <sighs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. We had some nice long stories for you. Don't forget, the new episode will be Saturday the platform will be updated and all fixed and all that stuff so until then guys have fun be scary tell some scary stories man and hey you guys find me on facebook and please tell me some scary stories you heard and i'll talk about them i don't care <laughs> but i want to say thank you to people everybody around the world who listens and does like the show thank you thank you thank you Golly, I got the hiccups, can't quit. But anyways, you guys be good, be scary. Thank you for listening. Keep listening. And uh, who knows what we'll get into. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you once again, and I'm out of here. Have a great weekend. Have a great week, and uh, be spooky. All right, YouTube. We will see y'all later. Be good. I am out of here. Uh, you guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to try to go on tonight sometime. So, be prepared. See you later, man. Bye.